back to this rather tragic Rover 25. I'm going to see if I can get it started at least today. Maybe uh, it has, maybe it will actually start with a bit more uh, determination on the extra battery. All of my cars here get names kind of as a mark of respect with it's being fixed and sold or simply taken apart. It's still a car. It's still somebody's pride and joy at some point. Terry. Project Terry. I don't know why Terry just seems like a bit of a tragic name somehow. So Terry it is. I'm going to have to go and get my hands warmed up again already because the fingers are absolutely freezing. Um, <clears throat> and then I'll talk a bit more about this car and why it's just not really going to be salvageable. Now, yesterday I couldn't even get the car to start, so I'm going to investigate that a little bit further, but look at all this oil on the top of there. That's got a really bad leak from that rocker cover there. Anyway, what I'm going to do is, as it's been rather damp, I'm going to spray all of the uh, ignition leads, the coil packs, the WD-40. Uh, looking through the grill, the radiator's definitely seen better days as well. I suspect we have a head gasket failure with this car anyway. But if I can get the car started, I can drive it around, albeit with lots and lots of noise, then at least I can find out what other things are salvageable. But if I can't drive it anywhere and I can't get the engine started, then the only salvageable, uh, the only salvageable things are going to be the exterior the trim wheels that kind of thing interior wise there really isn't much i can salvage it's so rotten uh, i don't even want to sit in it um well i mean would you want to sit on that i could clean it of course um and look at that for headlining that's obviously been leaking for quite a while but then it's obviously not helped when someone's pulled out the um this uh, uh, thing with Forgot which, what's it called? Sunroof seal. Uh, low compression. I'm going to try that again anyway. Now it's starting. It's trying to go. Certainly given the starter motor a hammer in there, it's probably all hot now. Now what I'm thinking is that the head, the head gasket has definitely gone, um, possibly between two cylinders. And with it being extra cold, it's just not wanting to fire up at all. So tomorrow, I believe it's going to be quite a bit warmer, maybe to work then. Still won't be any good though. have it running so I'm going to get some water and bung it in the uh, expansion tank and uh, just see what happens to that. You never know, maybe the head gasket hasn't gone but I think it probably has to be honest. Oh yes. You don't know that exhaust noise, the engine actually sounds quite good. A bit difficult to tell of course. Right, so now I've switched it off and I'm going to see how easily it switches back on. Very easily. And now I'm going to switch it back off. Oh, it's going to switch itself. No, it's not. Now I'm switching it off and tomorrow I shall switch it back on, see how easily it does it then.
just about to go over to um, Terry here and see whether it'll start today as well. Um, I've been running it for well, maybe 10 minutes last night. Uh, I had just no idea whether it's going to work or not. Come on, little Terry. Let's see. That's oh, the other thing, actually. The uh, oh, it works. The ignition. Someone's messed about. Tried to jam a screwdriver in there, but oh, no, there's nothing at all there. That battery's as flat as your uncle's chest. Just out of curiosity, I think I'll find out just exactly how dead this battery really is. Hmm. Yeah, that's definitely not enough to make it start. It's gone very chuffy, this thing. Right, let's try it again. There you go, kicking into life. Not sounding too dissimilar to a World War II fighter plane. While I wait for the rain to stop again, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Basically, I've just got to put another battery in it that works and I should be able to move it around all by itself. But, got to get around that horrible uh, mould and glass everywhere. So I could do with giving it a right good clean up but I need to bring it up here first to do that, so I need some sort of um, cover. Yeah. There's my solution to the grotty seat situation. Stalled it coming off the ramp there, and uh, now I'm going to have to jump start it again. Go <sighs> oh, a success! I managed to get the car off the truck and up to the other end of the yard, where I shall look after it a bit. But there's no going back on this. I mean, it's absolutely. Now, although uh, this car is going for parts, I am going to clean it all before I start to mess with it. Um, it might seem a bit pointless, but I don't really want to be in there with what you can see there. So to start with, I've got to uh, clear the boot out, looking for the locking nut, uh, locking nut key in fact. Uh, and to do that, I'm actually going to wear some gloves, some rubber gloves. Yes. Always a relief when you find that thing in the glove box as well. The first part of cleaning out done. Just took a uh, half a bin liner full of personal belongings and stuff that really doesn't want to be kept. So now with the seat covers gone, we can see the extent of the mould inside there. It doesn't look any better. I will actually vacuum all that out as well. Again, it seems a bit pointless, but I don't particularly want to be getting my hands in glass or anything like that. Now, the sad fact is that this car was probably a really nice little car just a couple of months back. And then it gets vandalised and left in a car park and people can clearly see that it's not being used. I just tripped over. I actually genuinely did trip over that time. Not a joke like I normally do. Anything left standing for a while just bring about a the wrong kind of person. Even having a flat tyre doesn't help, but a smashed windscreen, obviously something much worse. I have had a few people saying, well, you know, the windscreen can't be that much to do, and, you know, surely it's worthwhile saving. But when you start to add it all up, what is it, £100 for windscreen? The cat needs replacing, an aftermarket, one of those might be about £60 or £70. Uh, the tyres actually look okay on the outside, but on the inside, they need replacing. 
Um, so even budget tyres or after not aftermarket, sorry, uh, part one. We're looking at another sort of fifty pound there. MOT another forty pound, um, and that's before we even got to any of the um, engine issues. And then it's worth about three hundred and fifty pound because it's tatty. What am I supposed to do? Can't really do that job, can I? I struggle enough to sell them as it is when they're tidy. Right, well that's a bit better. At least I can sit in it with my work clothes on now. Okay, so what I'm about to do now is um, go for a drive in this car while holding my mobile phone, which in this instance is actually quite legal because we're on private land. Oh, balls. Right, no, I'm not going to go for one after all because the battery's just giving up on me again. Okay, try that again. Gearbox isn't very good. I can report that the speedo doesn't work and the heater blower doesn't work on too, and these knobs are useless. And that's it. Oh, look at this. These vents actually work. Look at that, those ones. I'm keeping those for sure. All of them work, that's great. And the, ah, right now the clock. The clock doesn't work, but that's no surprise. Is it? The end of another short day at Project Nigel. And a relatively positive one, I suppose. Well, I still get the shivers thinking about all that mould in there. It's, oh, it's, oh. Obviously, if, um, if the car's damp, that kind of thing happens. But the worst thing that people do is leave all that food stuff in there. Letting children eat sweets and crisps and things like that. It just If you really want a mouldy car, you should eat in your car. That's simply it. Anyway, until tomorrow, that's it. Bye-bye now.